So, continuing from the last video, here's the implementation of our slurp. Uh, R times Q inverse raised to the T power times Q. And this is the raising operator, so it, you convert to axis angle, and then multiply the angle times T, and then make a new quaternion out of that new value. So that's that's it really let's go and see what I've done here so that we can see how quaternions and Euler angles work differently uh, I've made some start and end angles that we're gonna interpolate so for this start angle it's like if you turn your head 90 degrees to the right okay and then keeping your head 90 degrees turned to the right look up at the ceiling so that you're kinda looking up and right and that's the end angle and so I made an Euler and Quaternion version of both of those, and we're going to see how well they interpolate. Here we go. This one on the left is the Euler angles, and you can see that it dips over to the left before it, it finishes its rotation. And that's not very good. This is the Quaternion one. You see it goes directly up and down without dipping over to the left like the Eulers do. So, great, spherical linear interpolation, and it works beautifully. Now, what are the applications of this? I mentioned this at, in the first video, but it's been so long since then. So let's talk about that some more. Uh, I would say the, the biggest, well, first of all, it's a trend in the game industry that a lot of people are starting to use quaternions uh, instead of matrices and Euler angles. For example, Unity uses quaternions for all of their rotations these days. And uh, Bullet, the physics engine, with the new version is now trans transferred to using quaternions instead of matrices and to represent rotations. So it's kind of catching on and uh, now that you are a pro with using quaternions you'll be up with all the new stuff that's going on. Uh, so what can they be used for more specifically? They can be used for any rotation, but they're especially good for camera systems. That's one good implementation because you have you have cameras that are looking every which way. They have lots of different different orientations, and you want to be able to interpolate between this and that orientation, especially for things like cutscenes or for games like games like God of War, where your camera is on a track. Uh, games like Panzer Dragoon or, or or games where the the game controls the camera a lot. Not game and here I'm controlling the camera with the mouse, but if the game controls the camera, quaternions are great. And also something that we're gonna get to a little bit later, which is skeletal animations. We haven't done anything with it. we have just a bunch of block shapes and we have no anim we don't even have models yet. But we're going to eventually get to doing skeletal animations. And each bone, like a bone in your body, each bone has a vector for its position and a quaternion for its rotation. And all of the math there is done with quaternions. So it's a lot of really cool stuff. So this video is actually kind of backwards. The code section comes first because now we're going to go to the map, back to the drawing board and we're going to look, we're going to do a quick review of all of the three kinds of rotations and what their pros and cons are. So let's do that. Now let's take a moment and look at all these three types of rotations that we've come up with um, and, and see if we can identify what is the best situation, compare and contrast them, when do we use one, when do we use the other. Euler angles are great for if you have something that can be easily modeled with the pitch, yaw, and roll deal that Euler angles have going on. So for example, exactly what we did with them, the modeling the mouse movement from the player, the, the pitch uh, maps very nicely to the mouse up and down movement and the yaw to the mouse left and right movement. And that's why we use the Euler angles for the players. I mean, you can use matrices and quaternions for those, but Euler angles are easy to think about and to learn, and so that's why we did that. Um, Matrices are better for if you want to transform vectors, if you do, do a lot of vector transformations or coordinate space transformations, and I think we talked about coordinate spaces, local and global coordinate spaces. 
they're the only ones, the only of these three that can do that. So I'm going to give it matrices a check here. Oh. This is where I meant to put the check. Quaternions and, and Eulers can't really do that, but quaternions uh, are very fast, and they they may not be as easy. I'm going to give them a a red X for easy, but they're they're very small and fast and can do interpolation very well. So let's fill out the rest of this grid matrices. Eh, kind of kind of. I'm going to give a little squiggly mark because they're kind of easy if you think about them in a, in a in the right way. Three vectors in, in each one in each column. Um, but some things can be very confusing with matrices. Euler angles cannot transform a vector at all. They're simply the wrong tool for the job for that. Although quaternions, they can. So we're going to put a check right here. Coordinate spaces, Eulers can't do that at all. And quaternions, mm, not really, no. Uh, they can do only the rotation part of the coordinate space, but that's you know that doesn't that doesn't cut the cut the doesn't cut it. that doesn't cut it. <laughs> Euler angles can kind of interpolate, but they don't do it very well. They're 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 very poor at it. You saw what we did early in this video, how it would cut out to the side instead of giving a nice smooth interpolation. And matrices. Not really, they can't really do it. They're going to give you the wrong result if you try. Quaternions are great for interpolations. They're perfect. If you have to do a lot of interpolation, quaternions is where you should go. Now, let's take a look at how big is each representation. Euler angles, you need a pitch, yaw, and a roll. That's three floating point numbers. With a matrix, you need three vectors, actually we used four, you can get it down to three if you want, um, but if you're, if you're going to do some of the more complicated stuff that we're going to do later with matrices, you really need four, but I'm going to put either nine or twelve here, twelve, nine or twelve floating point numbers, either way, it's a lot, uh, but with quaternions you can get it down to four. So quaternions and Eulers very small compared to matrices and much cheaper to do the the calculations with and that should wrap up our quaternion videos thanks very much next week we're gonna do s something else